thank you for joining us. Today we'll listen to the Bija Mantras for Liver, Heart and Vishuddhi. Uh, and then following on from that, there'll be an extract from a talk given in Italy in 1988. But first, let's collectively bow down in front of Shramataji, raise our Kundalini and put ourselves into Bandhan. Thank you. 
So these are the B. Gementris for liver. Om Shri Chandraman Namaha Om Shri Kailas Swamini Namaha Om Shri Nirmala Chitta Namaha Om Shri Chitta Nirodha Namaha Om Shri Chitteshwari Namaha Om Shri Chit Shakti Namaha Om Shri Mukuteshwari Namaha Om Shri Muhammad Namaha Om Shri Hazrat Ali Fatima Bin Namaha Om Sarvatap Harini Namaha Om Shri Sanjeevani Swamini Namaha Om Shri Vichar Shaitilya Namaha Om Shri Yati Kriya Shaitilya Namaha Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devyai Namo Namaha Om Shri Himalaya 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 wasn't quick enough okay so this one's for um, the Vishuddhi Shri Vishuddhi Chakra Swamini Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devyai Namo Namaha Sakshat 
श्री राधा कृष्ण साक्षा श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देव्य नमो नमः अल्लाह अकमर अल्लाह अकमर अल्लाह अकमर अल्लाह अकमर अल्लाह अकमर अल्लाह अकबर अल्लाह अकबर अल्लाह अकबर हो actually going to finish those other eight. Allah <laughs> Akbar 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 Just sit quietly for a couple of minutes. And now we'll listen to the ones for the heart. <laughs> they actually got lost before, so found them. Shri <laughs> चक्र स्वामी साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवी नमो नमः Yum, 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 
श्री निर्मला देव्याय नमो नमः जय जगदम्बे 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 माँ 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 ओ Um, just a short extract this morning from uh, Sri Krishna Puja back in 1988. So this time we should say your Kundalini can only be nourished if you develop within yourself the sense of pure love and pure compassion. First I will use the word pure, that's my name also. That means you have to be innocent to begin with. If you are not innocent, then you have certain problems, maybe with your lust. Maybe your love might be directed towards some person only. Kundalini is not like that. She rises, she goes through all the chakras, she doesn't get involved into any, she tries to cure every chakra, nourish that chakra, and she is only worried about her ascent. In the same way, a Sahaja should not get involved into any relationship as such. It's possible. You don't have to become like Buddha's disciples. For example, as I have always told you, the sap in the tree rises and goes to various parts of the tree and then evaporates or comes back. So this passage should be kept open. And once this passage is kept open, the Kundalini can rise very easily without any trouble. But this passage can be closed in case you get too much involved into one thing. Because there are some people who get involved, say, in their parents to begin with. All right, in the beginning I know those who come in the beginning to Sahaja Yoga we start saying, Mother, my fathers, sisters, husbands, these things, that is sick. So will you please cure that person? Very common. They'll write long, long letters describing the relationship and I really lose the connection. Who is this one? Without writing the names, they will give all the connections that they have. These are all artificial connections. Tomorrow some calamity comes on you. These relationships 
are of no use. On the contrary, you'll find they'll take advantage of it. You cannot depend on these relations of yours, in what family you were born, in what religion you were born, in what country you are born, because now you are a universal being. So you are no more related through these artificial relationships, but you are related through your spiritual relationships. Unless and until we establish that within ourselves. That doesn't mean you give up your husband, give up your wife, give up your children, nothing of the kind. But that means that if you have to give up our conditionings, we have to give up all these things. There are all kinds of conditionings we have. If there are some good conditionings, still we should give up. In the sense, they should not be conditionings, but we should be master of them. For example, Indians have one good conditioning in a way in their own country that they must have their bath early in the morning. I used to do the same. Then England is horrible for that. It takes its respite. If you do that in England, it's a cursed country. You just can't do that. You have to take your bath in the night, otherwise give up bathing. And one has to change. But if you have that conditioning, then you will feel very sad, oh, oh, I missed my bath, I'm feeling, I can't sleep now, I can't feel all right, I am not normal. It's a good conditioning, but still it is enslaving you. So whether it is good or bad, if it is a conditioning, you should try to see it clearly, it's a conditioning. That doesn't mean that you should go in the opposite direction, that, all right, I'll never have my bath. That's not the way. It is that, all right, if it doesn't suit in the morning, I'll have it in the evening. Also, it doesn't matter, once in a while I miss it. The bath cannot control me. I'll control the bath. Nothing should control you. Then the Kundalini moves first, because you must have complete liberty. If you do not have complete liberty, then the Kundalini won't move. We have conditionings of our families, of our um, religion, of our country. These conditionings, as far as possible, is to be seen clearly that we have got it through our family. If you are born a Christian, you will always be more attached to Christ. Christ you have not seen, you don't know whether He existed or not, whether this Bible is true or not, but you will be more attached to Bible. Now, if you are a Hindu, you will be more attached to Gita or to Vedas or something. This creates imbalance, because we must have the same attitude towards all the religions, towards all the scriptures, that's the sign of a saint. So this conditioning has to go. In what country you are born is another conditioning which has to be fought out. Very important it is. I don't want to discuss the conditionings of different countries but you know very well. After Realization, when you rise higher than your society which is surrounding you, you start understanding and you start describing. I have come to know about the stupidity of all these countries through the people who belong to that country. For example, a French man will say, Mother, this is typical French mind. He is a French, otherwise born. Or a Hindu will say, Mother, this is typically a Hindu man. He will do like this. So then you understand that you are not typifying that country. You are a universal being and you are living like a universal being. 
Once you become the universal being, then also you realize that the skin deep complexion makes no difference in the world. So then you don't start hating somebody who is darker than you or who is fairer than you. Both ways it works. It's not only the people who are fair hate the darker ones, but darkers also hate equally. And mutually they believe that they are all absolutely wrong. If you ask a fanatic about another religion, he'll say, that's the worst religion, his is the best. And you ask the another fanatic, <laughs> he will say, his is the best, the rest of it is the worst. That means all of them are the worst, in a general opinion. Everybody seems to be the worst, all the fanatics are the worst, if you take a general consensus, you see. Nobody will say that, all right, my religion is all right, and at least one another is all right, nobody. If you ask an Englishman, he'll say, Mother, this is typically English, you can't help it. They get so angry. I've seen the English getting angry with the other English for misbehaving or doing something towards me, but I don't, because they're blind. So here, the compassion should come within you as a universal being that by God's grace you have risen higher in the real sense of the word. It is not just you are certified, you are realized souls, no. You are realized souls, no doubt. You are sakshat. So, then as it is now you are absolutely certified by God that you are realized souls. Naturally you must change everything. No use typifying yourself, identifying yourself with something that is now you have given up. For example, from the egg now you have become the birds. Now birds don't identify themselves with the eggs and settle down in one, one place, they fly. Now they have become birds, there are no more eggs. In the same way we should accept our position we should accept ourselves as realized souls with self-esteem and understanding as to what is our purpose of life now. It is changed completely entirely. Once you understand the purpose of your life innately, not outside because I am saying or it's a mental process, but inside you feel responsible. You have got realization to spread it all over the world. We'll just have a silent meditation.
Jai Shri Mataji. Thank you, Mother. Thank you so much for showing me and showing us all how to enjoy the play and the Leela. Um, what you don't realize here is um, that was completely the wrong talk. Um, I don't even know how this talk started because <laughs> I clicked on something else. So um, I just went with it. It's actually a talk from 1992 and it was How to Nourish the Kundalini. And so I'm sitting here and I've got this huge grin on my face and, and I'm listening to Shramataji. And at the same time, I'm absentmindedly just looking at the words that are on the screen going with the talk. And I see that the words are completely different to what Shramataji is actually saying. So not only was it the wrong talk, which was probably the right talk, whoever did the uh, <laughs> translation just got a completely different talk that they were translating and put it with this one. So Jay Shramataji, because um, what more can we ask for for a perfect description of just seeing the play and being able to enjoy it? Because once upon a time, um, I certainly would not have been sitting with a big grin on my face. I would have been panicked and probably knocking things over trying to rectify <laughs> to fight all. So Jay Shumataji, and thank you so much for joining us today. We'll just finish up with um, the last verse of the three great mantras. Om Twame Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasrara Swamini Moksha Pradaini Mataji Shri <laughs> Sorry Shri Shri Nimala Devi Namonama Oh Mother, please forgive me <laughs> Thank you everybody for bringing your vibrations this morning <laughs> And have a wonderful day
Jai Shri Mataji. Thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and enjoy the play. And when you're ready to finish your meditation, please just bow down in front of Shri Mataji, raise the Kundalini and put yourself into a bandha. Jai Shri Mataji, everyone.